Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and this is becoming a familiar thing for us, but we are here with yet another commitment for K-State. The Wildcats continue to add to their class, and this time it's on the defensive side of the ball again. It's JoJo Scott, a corner for the Cats out of the state of Florida, so another Florida recruit, something that's become much more common in the Chris Kleiman era. We talked about that, um, it feels like, maybe less than a week ago about how Florida has kind of started to, to come back into the K-State area of getting commitments. And this is a guy that had a lot of significant offers. You can see him there on the bottom of the screen. KU, South Florida, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Georgia Tech, West Virginia, Louisville, Iowa State, and NC State. Those are the big ones. And if you follow along with the on three RPM, the RPM was actually favoring KU when this commitment happened. And I think before we even get into anything about this recruit, Drew, uh, you you wrote about it yesterday in the commit story, but it is significant because he had more official visits lined up, but those are not happening anymore. He came to K-State. He saw it. He said, this is where I want to be. And uh, those other schools are not going to even get the opportunity to host JoJo Scott. So give the people a little bit of information there. Yeah, it's a very significant add and kind of how the recruitment played out because he still had official visits planned and scheduled uh i believe that one was going to be to kansas even uh J june 21st this coming weekend so that kind of shows you that k-state really kind of blew him away and the official visit really kind of exceeded his expectations and k-state was firmly in the running from the very beginning with jojo scott and he was somebody that they really prioritized. And I think that kind of seeing Manhattan and seeing around and kind of knowing how he'll be utilized really kind of played a role into his recruitment. And I mean, it, it's very significant. I mean, that's a lot of offers from power four programs. And even though they hadn't offered for a while, Wisconsin was a team that really liked Jojo Scott and wanted him to visit as well. So, I mean, that, that's something to really kind of keep in mind that this kind of came out of nowhere a little bit because I, I mean, I, I was one as well that kind of thought that this would be okay. He's going to take all of his official visits, probably commit before his senior season begins, but instead he gets it done and K state gets it done before. I'm not even sure if he was even home uh, from Manhattan yet when he uh, committed to the K state coaching staff. So, I mean, that's kind of what we're seeing right now is K state is, really flexing their muscle on the recruiting trail toward on these official visits. I mean, right now, Sammy Etienne is the only player that they haven't gotten that has taken an official visit that is committed elsewhere. Yeah. And, and that happened just recently today to, to West Virginia. All right. So people should also probably be aware that you're really excited about this get for K state. The longer that, you know, you you've had to process what's gone on here because uh, you were ranting and raving about him to D.Y. and I earlier today. So what is it about JoJo Scott that you like so much for this addition to K-State? I mean, you see the film there. Like, the these are not just, you know, necessarily gimme picks that are being thrown to him, but he's making plays. And uh, certainly that's something that will get K-State fans excited. Yeah, he he's probably in the firmly in the top two. And I, I would even really consider him as a number one commit in the class right now for me uh for k-state i just think that he's something that we haven't really seen at k-state quarterback wise they've gotten some longer guys that can really run and cover but there's just something different and i think that it's just scott being a little bit more polished as a junior than some of the other uh k-state recruits where like you can really look at their prototype at corner and he fits the bill to a t I just think that he's probably a little bit further along in his development, which means that he could be somebody that sees the field a little bit earlier. He's really impressive with the balls in the air. I think that's the one thing that's really kind of popped to me. He has, an, it isn't even an, an interception to me that really popped. Uh, it was the fact that he made a really nice diving play to break up a pass that really popped out. Uh, another thing that has really popped to me and has been impressive is how much speed he possesses for how long he is. And another fun one is the one that you see right here. He plays the, the Wildcat quarterback every once in a while for his high school because he's just the best athlete on the field. So, I mean, that that's a really fun and kind of unique thing. But the speed and length is really fun, and I think that he probably has more 
ball skills. That's the diving play that I was talking about. He probably has more ball skills than we've seen a K-State corner commit have going into their senior season. Well, I just think you you can even get an idea of looking at the the huddle clips from him, but like the size sticks out there already. Uh, and it's not like he's massive by any means, 6'2", 165. There's obviously room there for him to get bigger, but he just stands out and looks like the best athlete on the field. And then you actually see him be the best athlete in the field. Obviously, they have him on kick returns. We saw him take a kickback for a score. Uh, basically, every interception that we've seen from him in this tape, he's at least returned at 30 yards. So there's that element. You talk about getting to the ball and everything else. Uh, this seems just like a really nice pickup for K-State, who we know that the the commitment process and the recruiting process for corners has not always been the strongest out of high school for K-State, but it does seem like this year uh, things are kind of changing for the better in that department because the Cats have already lined up a handful of corners in this class, and they seem to have some really good options that they really like still out there, uh, and this could shape up to be one of Maybe the one of the most significant defensive classes for, you know, if we're talking three years from now, three, four years from now, what the 2025 recruiting class looks like. Uh, defensively, it seems to be kind of building for K-State in a really strong direction. Yeah, I would say that last year's class, the 2024 class, is probably going to be a little bit more known for the offense and specifically offensive line. But if you really look at where this class is and where this class is trending, there's a lot of players on offense that I'm still excited about that case that has landed or is hosting on visits and potentially could land. But I think that this defensive class, if all kind of goes to plan, could probably be what case it's known for. And specifically in the secondary, because I mean, Jojo Scott adds to Martel Jackson, who I really like as somebody that could probably be a future dude in the next few years uh, with how his development goes. And then, all three or all four safety prospects that K State's hosting and or has already hosted with Leo Almanza, Dominic Mitchell, uh, Sirius Stinyard, and um, Jaden Bradley. All four of those guys could be future dudes as well if K State were to land them. So I think that it might be like the the year of the secondary and, and how last year was kind of like the year of the offensive line. This this could be the year of the secondary. Yeah, it's 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 really starting to look promising and. Uh should be exciting for for K-State fans. So Scott now becomes the eighth commit in the class for K-State. Uh, most of these they have added in the last week now. It started with Adonis Moyes, the wide receiver. Uh, I guess it was last Tuesday that would have been that he committed. And then Sawyer Schilke, Dalton Knapp was involved there. Um, JoJo Scott now and, and Martel Jackson going back uh, a little over a week now. So this really is eight day period has been really productive for K-State. And I guess uh, before we get out of here, any indication that this will continue to grow that number of commitments over the next day or two and that this hot streak continues for K-State? Yeah, I think it's pretty likely that the hot streak continues. I just think that with how everything is going, and again, this kind of goes back to uh, one of the videos that we did earlier last week. This whole last week has been a, an absolute blur for me in terms of videos and commits. Uh, but it was one of the videos that we talked about or that we did last week that kind of what you see now is when you have this momentum, that spots are also up for grabs. So you're kind of seeing guys who want to get in kind of deciding to wrap up their process a little bit earlier. And I think that that's kind of something that you see with Jojo Scott because, you know, you're not really sure how many corner commits k State's going to take. If you want in, you probably should go ahead and wrap it up. And we're kind of seeing that along the same lines with linebacker spots. And depending on how things go in the secondary at safety, that's, that's another position where you're kind of seeing where the pressure is on. And if you want in, you should probably go ahead and commit. So I think that that's kind of something to really kind of keep in mind that because of how things are really trending and rolling, it means that that's probably going to keep going because you're in a, in a spot right now where if you want in and you're a defensive player, because I mean, you, you look at the last six commits, almost all of them are on the defensive side. So if you're a defensive player that's on, on the verge, you should probably end up deciding relatively soon if you want to be at K-State. 
All right. Well, that's all good to keep in mind. And if there are any other commitments over the next couple of days, your place to get all the info that you need is at kstateonline.com. So head over to On3, find us there, and be sure to come here to the KSO YouTube every time there's a commit. We'll keep you covered and in the know with everything that goes down there. And uh, we'll get a little uh, preview for everybody uh, by the end of the week on the official visitors from this weekend because – This might be the most significant official visit weekend of the uh, summer for K-State because Lincoln Cure will headline it, but there are also some other really good names mixed in there. We'll talk about those, get Drew's thoughts as K-State continues to try and grow this 2025 class. They're off to a really, really good start through the midway point of June, and uh, we still have basically two weeks until that 4th of July uh, target time that I've given Drew basically on on telling me how many commitments there will be for K-State. They sit at eight right now, and we've gotten a couple over the last few days that maybe weren't anticipated. Uh, so where do you think K-State will sit now? Do you have an updated target in mind in terms of number of commits by the fourth? I think the target number is probably in that 12 to 15 range still. I I I think that 10 might have been a little underselling, but I think over 15, you're probably overselling. So probably in that 12 to 15 range is probably where K-State would like to be. And that, that I think to me, that would show that they really had a really good summer because it means that they got a lot of their top targets. All right. We'll see how it ends up working out. As always, that's Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back again tomorrow talking a little bit more about the Cats.